one is kind of continuing from my uh, video I just did the other day um, called Being Faithful Until the End. And so after I'd done that one, I, I know I talked a lot. It was kind of, um, it went on for a long time, so I hope it wasn't too long. But um, after I thought of some more things I wanted to share on that and continue reading a bit there in Matthew 24. So that's kind of where I'm continuing just some more thoughts, things I thought was kind of important with what I already shared and what I'm wanting to kind of, you know, to bring across. And just so that we know um, kind of what to expect, Um in, in the end times and um, just how to stay strong and to stay faithful until the end and what uh, we need to be doing in the end. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to be talking um, a bit more about that and then reading uh, further in Matthew 24 that I read in Matthew uh, 24 verses uh, 3 to 15. I want to start at uh, verse uh, 21 and and then read um, down to 31 and read and, and talk about that. But I really would want you to read that chapter of um, uh, Matthew and just see what it says uh, for yourself and so to really have a good understanding and so that you're knowing um, what to expect in your, you know, prayer and we're, we're and that we can be strong in the Lord and, and be built up in the faith and that we can be ready to stand um, for our faith and and just, you know, to have that hope secure in us and then to be able to share that with others. So, all right, I'll get, um, get into that and read that. So, um, in the verses I just read, um, from Matthew uh, 24 to 3, 3 through 15, um, we were talking about it's going to be wars and rumors of wars. A nation would raise, a, uh, come out against nation. Um, there'd be lots of persecution, uh, tribulation, and um, pestilence and earthquakes, and lots of, and false prophets, etc. So, that's kind of again in verse 21, um, kind of we, we, we uh, be talking a bit more what Jesus said about that. It says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So there's that verse that I mentioned yesterday, and then it said that um, there'd be such great tribulation as ne never was before. And then uh, verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So we need to be on guard, be on duty, know the word. That's why it's so important to read this and know what's coming, and so we can decipher, you know, from the false and it's true, and know when there is the false prophets and false teachings, and beware, they're going to come with signs and wonders. They're going to be able doing. Um, Miracles, but they're going to be able to do miracles, and so not every miracle and things are not all from Jesus. We need to be very discerning and just being aware of what um, what Jesus said, his, his words. So in verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth, behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of man be. For what, wherever store of the carcasses, there will be the eagles be gathered together. So it's in, um, sounds like it's been be a big thing that it's not a hidden thing when Jesus comes and returns. Um, in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of uh, the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of, of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all, all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together as elect from the four winds from one end of their heaven to the other. Wow. Okay, so I finished um, that piece. And... Um, well, that talks about his coming. So the great tribulation, like there's never was before, and um, with the false prophets in, and teachers arising, and then when he comes, he's going to come in, um, in the clouds with a great uh, trumpet. Um, wow! So it's not going to be a secret thing is coming, and it says that we will be here for the tribute 
tribulation. And so I think we just need to be aware of that because I know there's a teaching out there uh, that really talks about that we will be taking uh, before that tribulation, before the tribulation starts. And why I'm, I'm concerned is because um, what Jesus is saying here, it sounds like we will be here for that. And if you're thinking and putting a lot of stock in not being here when the troubling times uh, start, that we may lose hope and lose courage and wonder where he is and where, you know, and and so if we can know, then we can just, you know, take heart. And like I said yesterday, take heart and um, find our strength in him and just know this is what, um, this is part of it. And, and um, before he comes so that we do, uh, we're not losing hope, but we know that he is coming like he said. And these things are, are taking place just like he said and falling into place before his coming. Okay. I wanted to read Revelations 1, 7, 2. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall will because of him. Even so, amen. And um, that's neat, saying that uh, every eye shall see him when he returns, and even those that pierced him. Um, wow. So. And see, it's not something, you know, that's completely secret and what they call the rapture and we're whisked away as before the um, the tribulation that, that may seem nice. And, you know, if I, you know, and reassured you in the last one that God is with us, but, you know, we are going to go through this. And if we're not, if he, he didn't see it for us to be whisked away before the tribulation, that means he's got a plan and a purpose for us and that he needs us here and there's still a work to do and we need to be, you know, okay with that and realize that there's still a plan and there's still people that needs to come to know him. There's still, you know, a reason that we're here um, and carrying on and, and holding that, that baton high, the light, shining the light for all to see a while longer yet. So we want to make sure that we are doing that work and found faithful. Um, and I was going to say, um, you know, and a lot of those before us, all the great men and women of God in the Bible times have also gone through some great tribulations of their own and um, horrible deaths um, in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Both a lot of the disciples, his disciples gone through some horrible um, deaths. So you can see, you know, that is just part of being found faithful in him. And, you know, they were um, and. Um, you're willing to die for for him for their faith and that we need to be too um you know why would we think it's going to be you know so much different from us oh we're going to be totally taken away from this again like i said that would be nice i guess if that is what was part of you know if that that was god's plan but it's not we want to be found uh faithful unto death uh for him and um and then there's a verse that says those that will uh, seek to save their life shall lose, but those who lose their life shall save it. Um, we shall inherit, um, you know, the, the eternal life in him. Just because we die here on earth, it's not over, right? We in Christ know that it's not over. This is not the end of the story. Um, he will maybe looks forward uh, to that part of it, but we know when we die here, that then we're going to heaven to be with him forever. And our, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. It's over. What a glorious day. And we'll be rejoicing uh, and singing with the angels forever in heaven. Um, right. So this, this world and the pain and the sorrow we suffer here is very temporary. It really is. And, um, you know, so, yeah, that that is part of part of it and I just want you to be aware be, be strong and um, there, there's no other way there's no other hope outside of him um, we seek to save our life here like if Satan wants us to fall for his schemes and his way and so many to, um, you know places and people that are being persecuted for their faith they um, they'll be told just to announce your faith and you will, will save you. We will not, you know, will not be put to death. You will not be, you know, we won't put you in jail. We won't whatever. You just denounce your faith. And, and that's not an option. That, that means death too. We can save our life here, but we're going to lose it eventually in hell. So that is not an option. And, um, and, um, yeah, so just. Um, just have to remain strong in him. We get our strength from him. Uh, it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so when we um, find our, you know, our peace in him, he, he gives us that peace. He gives us that strength. He uh, gives us, you know, um, well, peace that passes all human understanding. They can't, 
um, understand uh, why you can have that peace and going through through stuff. They don't understand how you can be filled with joy and going through suffering and persecution. Uh, we hear many stories of those being persecuted and for their faith, and they are singing unto death. They are singing and praising the Lord, and they, they, there's joy in their faces and then shining on their eyes. Um, and people can see that. People that have, have, have witnessed um, the murders, they have seen and um, that is what is brought to the Lord. They're like, they see something on these people that no one else has. Like, this is something they want. This is something true. You know, this is lasting. They can see there's something, you know, and that's what turns people to the Lord. So even in that, there's still God is accomplishing a purpose. He's still bringing people to himself right in that, right in when it's hard, um, some hard stuff. And, and so I know I'm kind of talking some hard stuff here. Um, especially if you're you're just used to a lot of, um, you know, fluffing it when God's with us. And there's going to be no, you know, life is going to be great and it's going to be easy. That's not really so. And Jesus did not say that. He said, those that would follow me, um, you know, will be persecuted for their faith, will have tribulation. But if you could hear, I am with you. So, you know, he is with us and he's giving that strength like I, I mentioned. And, um, and uh and then so we can complete the purpose that he has for each one of us to complete the work that he has for us to do. All right. I just I wanted to read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 too, um, starting at verse 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth uh, corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in rice shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the... The saying that is written, death, where death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Wow, so this kind of covers a few um, things, but this talks again about his his coming. It says in, the, in verse 52, And in the moment, in the twinkle of an eye, the last, the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incredible. Wow. And then it says in verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a law. But thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um Wow, so they're saying, you know, that there that death has no victory, um, has no sting, and that Jesus is with the victory in Jesus. And uh, so, again, as I mentioned, in, um, I know that we just to realize that it, death is not, um, it's not the end of the story, and and that it's not something to fear. That when we're in Jesus, that um, that will just go on to our eternal life in Him, and so. Any which way in this world, we know that we're all will die at some point. And so, um, you know, when we're in Jesus, we have nothing to worry. And, and you know, and like you said, he, when we're in him, he said that we, that we will have the, the tribulation because we'll have those that will hate us like they hated him. He was hated, and so will we. Um, you know, but to keep... That he conquered that and, and that we can just find, you know, our strength in him. And that he enables us to endure that, to make it uh, through. And, um, yeah, we just have that hope uh, in Jesus. And um, and we don't have to, to, to fear that, um, but just kind of to know what it is. So we, we know what what is coming uh, as we get closer uh, to the end. And so we encourage one another and... Um, and to keep sharing our light and sharing the love of Jesus as long as we can. We have a great work to do. That's why we're here at this time. And we don't want to be slacking in that. In, uh, 
you know, and, and keep shining the light so the others can see that and want that and want what we have. All right, I just wanted to wrap this up with a few last verses. I'm in Matthew 28, and the last four verses are starting in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Well, wow. okay, so that is a great way to kind of close this. Um, right, that he, you know, has said all of those things. He's here, then he, he uh, rose um, from the grave in victory. Um, he is ready to return to his father in heaven. Um, he has told him that he's prepared a place and that um, those in him will be, um, will come to, that he'll return to take his people home to be forever with him. And he's giving these last instructions. I'm going to read those last few verses. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So God is with us always. We don't have to worry. He is right, you know, with us. Um, and we've got a work to do, so we need to remain faithful to be encouraging our uh, fellow Christians um, and saying, you know, let's keep doing this work that God has for us. He's got a plan that we're here and that he is always with us. And we can find that peace in him when we put our trust in him as that we read in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And there's so many other good verses I could share and read with you, but... Um, I'm sure you're aware of a lot of them, you know, just the ones that uh, there's some in Joshua says, um, have I not commanded you to uh, be courageous and to be strong? And, and that he, you know, as he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he is there. He is there with us and he's giving that a street and empowering us to do what he has called us to do. So, yeah, maybe you'll be uh, in, encouraged and keep keep the faith and keep keep on to, until the end and. Um, yeah, if you want to um, connect with me over my website and blog and kind of see um, what all I do there and more great resources, um, that would be great. And you can always leave me a comment and um, I'd love to hear from you. All right. Take care. Take heart. Be strong. Be courageous. And do the work that God has for you. Mm -hmm.